Hello, beta testers. <laughs> My name is Kyle. This video will be lightly edited because I endeavor to do what Rocksteady has deliberately gone out of its way not to do, and that's provide you with footage that isn't cut every three to four seconds so that you can truly see how monotonous this really is. It may not seem it, but I make these videos at great risk, so please keep this community growing. Like, subscribe, and comment or correct me below. As the authorities retrieve stained children's mattresses for DNA testing from the network of tunnels that Jews have feverishly been protecting, you'll find fanboys more upset with Kyle's opinions on a video game than over trafficked kids. And I want to make it abundantly clear that the amateur shill fanboys Rocksteady gave early access to were so blind and inexperienced that correcting the color of footage was apparently a task that it didn't even occur to them to do. It's so easily some of the murkiest, disgusting footage that I've ever seen, and I grew through, as a gamer, the piss palette era. I'm truly conflicted about enhancing it, because, you know, if it's good enough for them, then who am I to separate these people from what's clearly their treasure? But one man's trash, you know what I mean, beta testers? Combine this disgusting color with how noisy things can get on stream with a truly barf-worthy HUD. I, where do we begin talking about this? You, you're destroying yourself here, Rocksteady. They truly have no idea how lucky they are to have fanboys that'll guzzle any slop regardless. Of course they tolerate Harley downgrades when this is their favorite flavor of garbage. I didn't think that a Mad Lib like stained kids' mattresses and Jew tunnels was something that could be topped in the way of repulsion, but here we are, Sushi Squad by Rocksteady, who has now, of course, taken to refusing to call their live service a live service. Because <laughs> they don't subscribe to labels. <laughs> it's like a trans video game now. You know, to quickly frame the monumental backfire, Warner Brothers and Rocksteady gave fans the opportunity to opt in and play an alpha on the condition that they signed an NDA promising they will remain quiet about what they experience and play. They hoped that the consequence of the law would shut people up, but it only shut up the goody two-shoes who were going to suck that dick regardless, not the people struck with righteous conviction. A task of sparing other people the monotony of yet another stale nightmare of a live service Marvel's Avengers 2.0. Of course, the internet flooded with leaks. People online that I spoke to were furious with how generic this outing was. The footage circulated online showed exactly how dated, unfinished, and janky what should be fluid movements and animations were. The argument was that there was some sort of difficulty curve for traversing in an anti-hero game? Is that what made Spider-Man and Batman popular? Some sort of difficulty curve you gotta get acclimated to? So, naturally you have a bunch of people going, Oh, I just didn't play that character, I stayed on the one where the traversal was easy. The footage showcases an empty city with rooftops of four to five people standing there waiting for you to just fuck them up. It illuminated the one enemy type, just like Marvel's Avengers delisted ass, but this time, Instead of robots, it's Brainiac monsters. Even in the footage that the creators that were flown out presented, I've clocked over 15 bugs, identical to things I've seen in Gotham Knights and Marvel's Avengers. And I stress, beta testers, these events show the people the best that the games have to offer, not the worst. What truly shocked me were the patrol missions like point defense and resource gathering that were in Destiny 1 a decade ago, 10 years in 2014. This is what IGN actually mentioned in their interview as well. The irony of IGN admitting that they didn't like it was that Warner Brothers and Rocksteady only invited them because along with the 10K subscriber having Kool-Aid drinking fanboys that they assumed would just give them a glowing review, they brought them because they were safe. You know IGN as having a fucking reputation of giving everything a seven, of the review not meaning anything. But when IGN says, bruh, 
This is dog water. This is dog water. This reinforces what I've been saying all along. If Rocksteady and its trans video game that does not subscribe to labels has difficulty classifying itself, how can any of those developers begin to showcase it in a light that would make it palatable or appealing? When we already know Sweet Baby is making sure that it is the opposite of appealing. So even when Rocksteady was showcasing their game at its best, trying desperately to hide the transparent bullet sponge enemies that they were going to have for boss fights, I, you know, the gameplay loop just didn't fucking hit. It's not satisfying enough for normies, and that's who you build a live service off the back of. I keep trying to tell the shills in their echo chambers to be nicer to the people they need to play their game to keep it supported for a little bit longer, but I guess they're too stupid, so people get banned for their disagreement. However, the common denominator these experiences are crafted for is not just low, it is the lowest. <laughs> so beta tester, if you're business savvy enough to know that a pretty big titty feminine female bartender would make you more money than an ugly entity, then you can effortlessly understand why MiHoYo, maker of Genshin Impact, uh, soon Zenless, and uh, Honkai Star Rail, they won't be having any problems as they consider another Jiggle Physics waifu game to craft and then roll in the money. But Sweet Baby's Suicide Squad game will, of course, no struggle. So naturally, to people like me, Destin's perspective is of course valued because as a try-hard sweat, I can tell you that the whales that Rocksteady is angling for, they don't like to swim in empty waters. They need people to flex in front of. Is what I'm saying making sense? Can you like the video or put a comment down there if what I'm saying is making sense? As I've made clear, shills who exclusively praise things like Marvel's Avengers and Gotham Knights, of course, love this game. What? Of course, they'll be they'll be tolerating Sushi Squad for as long as it's supported. But. Unlike people like Reforge Gaming insinuating, quote, it's not what people want, so they hate it, end quote, I believe quite the contrary, that the separation between this and Saints Row Reboot is that people were apathetic the instant they saw those fake-ass, air quotes, gangsters. <laughs> But with the ship of Theseus developer Rocksteady, enough goodwill remained to make people cautiously optimistic. Enough, at the very least, to try it. They wanted to like it. Any fan would have, and some old head at Rocksteady was well aware of this, which is why, of course, they, ooh, it's in the Arkhamverse. You're interested now, aren't you? But with every hyper-edited look at the live service they don't want to call a live service, naturally audiences grew less optimistic. I said something over and over again in videos and streams in response to people's footage and believe it or not, a reviewer said the same thing. The industry must be in a really crazy state if they're actually saying things that make sense these days. Hogwarts Legacy really did a number on them. But here's what they said. You'd need to be told it's a Rocksteady game. Now I specialize in showing, not telling, so people can see how necessary it is to subvert with characters so far removed that you'd need to be told who they are. <laughs> Which always begs the question, if you're gonna go this far, why even call them this character? Why even call it this property? And the answer is because they wouldn't be able to get you to care if they tried it with anything else. They can't be original, none of that would be interesting, and they know it. How else are they going to get their messaging in front of your eyeballs? For the record, it is extremely uncommon for games that preview poorly to turn anything around. And even in the general scenario where Rocksteady was not well prepared for this preview event with fanboys, because how bad does it have to be even after all these delays <laughs> that you're still not ready? What does that say about the, the future when your live service inevitably hits um, a series of unforeseeable obstacles? You, you guys have no fucking idea what's coming, but you do, and that's why you're hiding. Any gamer old enough knows IGN sucks because they're typically too lenient, shilly, willing to give everything a seven. Trust Kyle, I taste a genuine fear from journalists recognizing their uselessness. This is truth, and time will tell. 
the hyper-positive fanboys have revealed their talking points and reinforced the message they were given and allowed to discuss. But the lack of satisfaction most have with the contrived Justice League killing doesn't make them eager to even see how the multiverse nonsense undoes it. It actually makes them shrug and check out before they're even interested in seeing what happens, let alone playing it. The top comments that I've been clocking all over mark this as a game that people will be experiencing on YouTube just watching the cutscenes. Rocksteady is crossing their fingers hoping that they can scoop Destiny refugees with nothing to play right now, and with Shill's help, you know, maybe skill up Paul Tassie, you know, the, the usual suspects that are willing to sell out for cringe like this. But even I think some of the streamers that would normally put their ass out there like this and just accept the bag with the understanding to their community that they're doing this for the money, I think even they might respect themselves a little and not capping for this trash. Even the shills that were hand selected and invited hated their trash. When discussing the disastrous always online live service Sushi Squad game by Rocksteady Games, it's impossible to ignore how repulsive the designs of these characters are, especially as it pertains to the track record of many of them. These are kind of the worst. If the game were confident, maybe the developers would believe in putting a beta out there, but it is my belief that there's not enough to be in a beta and also imply that there's more for the full game. That's not a headline you want is people going, oh, this isn't much more than the beta. That's why they understood to call the beta an alpha to really imply to the, the weirdos that were going to opt into this NDA nightmare that, oh, there's definitely way more that we're going to add. And that's why... A month out? What do you say? They don't want to be saved. We're not here to save them. We're here to inform people. That's why they dive in front of the criticism like it's a bullet. You know what I'm saying? It's nuts. And when they're diving in front of criticism like it's ammunition, you know they're probably upset that it isn't. They, they jump up like, I'm alive. Oh, I'm kidding. Am I? I don't know. What's up? <laughs> I think people need to stop. Is it not funny that like, okay. Let me end the video talking about this. Maybe you've heard of this model on, uh, what is it, Instagram? She, she has 200,000 followers, okay? And she's not real. It's like a deep faked face on other girls' bodies. But I think it's crazy that a scientific algorithm has arrived on, fairly effortlessly in fact, arrived on a more attractive, appealing woman. Uh, as it pertains to what would be of interest to the average man, fit body, feminine body language, long hair, cute face, big tits. You know, the opposite of the deliberately masculine, ugly designs that they force focus on with these Western abortions. And again, you know, I delight in talking about Echo that has this indigenous strong woman and she's got a prosthetic leg and she's deaf and they're, they're changing her abilities as it pertains to the comic book so that it's more cultural for the show, bro. And it's like, eh, I don't really care about the next race swapped thing. All of that shit is in this game too. It's getting a little funny. So I want, if anything, Sushi Squad to be wrapped up, mingled and tangled in the sweet baby ink treatment that is going to bring this down. The normies praise the writing to a certain extent and imply that, oh yeah, that story, it's just the gameplay is getting in my way. And okay, we'll see. We'll see how tame the sweet baby game is because Spider-Man 2 suffered for their inclusion. I'm going to go ahead and edit what I have in, in a pretty tragic way, man. These aren't things that I'm saying. I've reached a point where I can be done talking now. I can let other people do the talking and just cut it together like I have in the past. And I guess if you want to be upset in the comment section, like you found, I better not, I better, I better stop working that area and keep it, keep, keep, let that stuff stay in the tunnels. You know what I'm talking about? I love you and I'll talk to you soon, man.